scientific audience. So today I'm going to discuss the theoretical verification of the sum of kinetic and potential energy remaining constant for a falling object. And this lecture is of grade 10 ICSE. Uh, you will find this in the work power and energy. So basically we are trying to prove the law of conservation of energy at any given point. So let me consider, let me consider a ball which was at location A and we were just dropping the ball from location A. Now the ball reached the location B and finally this is the ground. It fell on the ground. It fell on the ground and this is location C which is just above the ground, negligible distance above the ground. Right guys. Now initially the ball was at h height above the ground. This distance from a to b, I'm going to call this distance as x. So if this is at h, if this is x, then this will become h minus x curve. This is our ground. Now, the moment we drop something, guys, you have to understand this very clearly that when we drop anything, the initial velocity is always zero. So when we are leaving or dropping the ball from location A, its initial velocity is zero due to which its kinetic energy is also going to be zero at location A. Because kinetic energy is half into mass into square of the velocity, which is zero over here. But it will have some potential energy at location A which is given by mass of the ball. Let us consider the mass of the ball as m. This is the ball whose mass is m. So potential energy is m. Height above the ground at location A is h. And acceleration due to gravity is g. So we are neglecting the air friction over here, guys. So when this ball is falling from A to C, there is no air resistance and it falls with constant acceleration in the downward direction. There are no resistive forces except one there is one gravitational force in the downward direction except that we are neglecting all other forces. So due to that force only the ball is accelerating in the downward direction. So its velocity will keep on increasing. So when it reaches at location B, let's call its velocity is V1 and when it reaches at location C, its velocity is V2 and of course V2 will be greater than V1 because it is accelerating in the downward direction guys. Okay. Now if I find the total energy then the total energy at point A will be sum of kinetic and potential energy that is 0 plus mgh that is mgh which is also referred as the mechanical energy. So this total energy which is mgh it is going to remain constant at B and C that is what we are supposed to prove guys. So let us consider point B and at point B the kinetic energy at point B is equal to half mass of the ball is m v1 square and the potential energy of the ball at location B is equal to m g. Height of the ball above the ground is h minus x. Because we have considered this point B which is at a distance x below point A. Now the total energy if I add, the total energy at location B is half m v1 square plus m g h minus m g x. I just opened up the bracket. Now, now guys, I will make a point that since this acceleration due to gravity is constant, acceleration is constant, we can apply this equation v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s and I am going to apply from here till here. So this is the initial position. This is the final position. So this becomes final velocity. This becomes initial velocity. So if I plug in the values over here, this becomes V1 square minus 0 square. That is equal to 2. Acceleration due to gravity is G. And A becomes G. And S is the displacement from A to B, which is X. So V1 square that is equal to 2GX. Now this value guys, I'm going to substitute it over here. So if I substitute this value over here, then the total energy 
at location B will be equal to half m v1 square is 2gx plus mgh minus mgx. So guys this 2 2 getting cancelled so this is mgx positive this is mgx negative getting cancelled. So we find that the total energy at location B is equal to mgh which was the total energy at A also. So these two are one and the same. Now the final thing we are supposed to find out the total energy at C. So let's do that. Okay guys. So at location C, C is just above the ground, negligible distance above the ground. So we may consider the height to be approximately zero. It is. It has just touched the ground. At that time it will have maximum velocity V2. Right and this one because it is accelerating in the downward direction, so the velocity keeps on increasing. Right guys? Okay. Now, kinetic energy at location C is equal to half mv2 square and the potential energy at location C is going to be 0 because mgh, h is 0. So, if I find the total energy at C, I am going to get this plus this as half mv2 square. Now, again, if I apply this equation v square minus u square to As from A to C. Now this time I am going to apply this from A to C. That means from here till here. So this becomes initial velocity, this becomes final velocity. Because there is a constant acceleration, I can use the equations of motion. So this becomes final velocity which is V2. This is initial velocity, final velocity. So V2 square minus 0 square, 2 falling down with acceleration g and the displacement from here to here guys is h. Look at this one, here to here displacement is h which means V2 square is equal to 2gh. Again this value I am going to substitute it over here. So it is half m 2gh again to 2 getting cancelled. So the total energy at location C is equal to mgh. So guys, the total energy everywhere, whether it is point A or B or C, it is going to remain constant because we have neglected air resistance over here. So guys, now it's time to plot the graph of the kinetic energy and the potential energy versus distance x which is above the ground. So there are three locations A, B and C, the same diagram but the only change what I have made in the diagram is this B point is exactly the midpoint of A and C. So if this height is h then this is h by 2, this is h by 2. So B is located exactly at h by 2 distance above the ground. Right guys and this is x and it is x is the height which is measured from the ground till the top. So that means at point C, x is 0 because x is the height above the ground. You are supposed to measure the x from the ground in the upward direction. So x value is 0 at location C because C is on the ground. If you start going up from the ground, you reach, you reach at h by 2. So the value of x over here is h by 2. Still you go up, x increases and when you reach over here, the value of x becomes equal to h. Now what we are going to do is at these three locations we are going to first plot the potential energy guys. So what is the potential energy at x is equal to 0? 0 because when we are at location C potential energy is mgh and height above the ground is 0. So at x is equal to 0 this is x is equal to 0. This is say x is equal to h by 2. and this is x is equal to h. You have to make sure that this distance and this distance are same like this x is equal to 0, x is equal to h by 2, x is equal to h. So basically this is point C, this is point B and this is point A. Right guys and what is the potential energy at x is equal to 0 or C? 0. So that means on the energy axis we are here. So this point is over here. Now at x is equal to h by 2, 
the mass of the ball is m acceleration due to gravity is g and height is h by 2 so the potential energy is m g h by 2 now i'm going to mark that m g h by 2 over here this is m g h by 2 so at h by 2 we have potential energy x is equal to h by 2 we have potential energy mgh by 2 guys now at x is equal to h we have potential energy mgh mass of the ball is m acceleration due to gravity is g h is the height so at h double the potential energy from here so if this is mgh by 2 the double from here somewhere over here we will be having mgh and that point will be here so guys please forgive me because this may not be a very straight line because I am drawing with my free hand so this turns out to be a straight line guys this turns out to be the straight line so if I draw this is a straight line graph potential energy now what about kinetic energy so at x is equal to 0 right okay we start from here at x is equal to h the body was at rest so if it is at rest its kinetic energy is 0 so at x is equal to h the energy is 0 kinetic energy this was potential energy graph now we are going to plot the kinetic energy graph in the same axis in the same graph itself guys so at x is equal to h here the ball was at rest so kinetic energy is 0 so that means 0 h so the graph will be here the point will be over here then exactly over here guys at this position b the total energy was mgh the total energy at any given point we just now proved was mgh and potential energy is mgh by 2 so the remaining mgh by 2 is the kinetic energy Clear guys, total energy was mgh, potential energy was mgh by 2, so remaining mgh by 2 was the kinetic energy, where? At location B, and B is at h by 2, so that means at this location kinetic energy is mgh by 2, so exactly coinciding over here, this point is already point, uh, plotted guys, now at this location, at this location C, potential energy is 0 total energy is mgh so the kinetic energy is fill in the blanks kinetic plus potential is mgh because this is the total energy total energy is this potential is 0 so the entire kinetic energy has to be mgh so this itself is the kinetic energy where at location c and at location c x is equal to 0 so at x is equal to 0 we have kinetic energy total energy as mgh because half mv2 square is mgh only guys so if you again draw it will be a straight line like this and this is a kinetic energy graph so hopefully guys i have taught you the entire concept if you have any doubts you can please post your comments in the comment section thank you for watching the video